Yo, what's going on everyone? How you guys doing today? Welcome back to another Steam 2 video. And in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the first weapon of the season. And that is the Season of Pulse Rifle, the Vantage Point. I got actually pretty lucky and managed to get this very early on with a very spicy roll. So this is the one that I kind of want to highlight and the one that I want to make a video on first. So in today's video, we're going to talk about the perks this weapon can get, what are some of the best ones, and the ones that you should be looking for if you're looking for a god to win this weapon. This one will actually have quite a good mix of both PP and PvE perks, so we're going to be taking a look at both of them. And the very first thing that we got to talk about is where to actually get this weapon, and there's two main places. The first one is going to be the new Onslaught playlist. There you can get all the seasonal weapons, including this one. And the other place is going to be from our seasonal vendor, this time being Ido. Uh, whenever you turn in some engrams into him, he'll have a chance to drop this pulse rifle. And when playing Onslaught, don't forget to use your tonic of Onslaught gear. This will make it more uh, likely that you get some salvation weapons. Now the Vantage Point is a 390 RPM adaptive frame pulse rifle. And it comes with this special origin trait, Dark Eater Reaper. Final blows with this weapon, periodically spawn Dark Eater charges. And whenever you come in contact or shoot these charges, uh, it will reload the weapon from reserves. And there are these little floating things if you've seen them around. Now we know what we're here for, we're here to look at some of those trade perks. And since we have some new ones, I'm pretty excited about it. So let's get into that. And first, let's start with perk number one. So these are going to be our perk options. And we're going to be starting off with a new one, which is Closing Time. This is going to improve your range, accuracy, and handling as your magazine gets lower. Think of it like under pressure, but instead of giving you stability, it gives you range and accuracy. And I can definitely see this one being pretty good, especially if you can combine it with under pressure. But even just by itself, I think it'll be pretty good. Next up after that, we have Keep Away, which is going to increase our reload, range and accuracy when no targets are in proximity. This one's pretty good, especially on pulse rifles. After that, we're going to have Stats Row, which is going to increase our handling, stability, reload, range, all for 10 seconds after hitting three separate targets. This is going to be really good for PvE and mostly PvE. After that, we're going to have Deconstruction. Uh, Deconstruction, I don't really see it being that helpful in this weapon. It does give you a bit of extra damage against like vehicles and structures, but I don't think that you're going to be shooting many of those with a pulse rifle anyways. So Deconstruction, I don't think it's going to be that great. After that, we're going to have to the pain. Whenever we take some damage, it increases handling and stability on this weapon. This one's pretty good for the Crucible, especially on some of the low handling weapons. But this one has some okay handling. I wouldn't say it has really low handling, but it's also not super quick. I would say that it's just okay handling. So you could definitely make to the pain work, but it's definitely not the best perk. Next up, we're going to have another one of the new ones, which is Lone Wolf. It's going to increase your aim assist aim down sight speed and also airborne effectiveness and whenever there's no uh, allies nearby it's going to increase those even more so at base it will give you some of the benefits but it really comes in when there's no allies near i could see this one being really good in something like competitive or trials but not on something like 6v6 and the final perk on this slot is going to be eddy current which is going to give us increased reload and handling after sprinting or while we're amplified this one can work very well on arc builds, but if you're not wearing an arc build, I wouldn't really bother with Eddie Current. And first of all, let's talk about the PvE perks. And I think your best bet when it comes to PvE with this weapon is going to be Stats Furl. You get a bunch of reload speed, handling, stability, and all very easily just by hitting three targets. This one's going to be the best one. And like I said before, Eddie Current can be good, but I would only use it if I was wearing already like an arc build. Now for the Crucible, I think the best ones are definitely going to be either Keep Away, since it's going to give you that range and accuracy all the time as long as you're not close to enemies, which with a Pulse Rifle, you shouldn't really be that close anyways. I feel the uptime with Keep Away is going to be a lot higher, and it's going to make up for the fact that maybe it doesn't increase your range and accuracy as much as something like Closing Time does, but because it's always up all the time, you're always taking advantage of it. Another perk that you could definitely still go for though, are going to be To The Pain and Lone Wolf. I feel like those two are also going to be able to be pretty good in Crucible, just not as good as something like Keep Away. Now if you're thinking of playing some competitive or trials, then I could definitely see Lone Wolf being a little bit better and being more on part with Keep Away. Now moving on to the second perk, these are going to be our options. First of all, we have one of the new perks, Jolting Feedback. Dealing repeated damage with this weapon inflicts Jolt. 
So as long as you just keep firing on one enemy, you're going to apply Jolt to them, and then it's going to start doing those beautiful things that Jolt does, which hurts that enemy some more, and they're also going to chain lightning to any enemies around them. Jolt is still amazing, so this one's going to be a really strong perk for PvE. The next perk is going to be one for all. Whenever we hit three separate targets, we get a big damage buff, a 35% damage buff. And this one's going to be really good, especially with uh, stats throw. Stats throw plus one for all. You know, it's a classic combo. And it's going to be really good with this one. After that, we have high impact reserves. Rounds at the end of the magazine will deal more damage. This applies both to PvP and PvE. But you definitely see a bigger increase in PvE. I can definitely see this perk working with closing turns specifically. Having that extra damage plus the range, accuracy, and handling would be pretty nice. The only problem with that is that you are gonna have to like dump half of your mag before getting into a gunfight, but you are gonna have a bunch of different buffs going into a gunfight, meaning that you're more likely to win it. The only problem with this is that whenever you have a full magazine, then you're not really uh, taking advantage of any of your perks. It's like you're don't even have any perks. So to make this work, it will definitely require a certain playstyle. Next up, we're going to have Desperado, and Desperado is going to be pretty good. It's going to decrease our TTK from 0 0.93 to 0 0.73. Quite a big drop uh, once we get some Desperado going. After that, we have Focus Fury. And this one is going to be just okay in PvE. Uh, it's not really going to be the best. I definitely would take uh, one throw over Focus Fury. I just feel like it's a better perk. You're looking for a damage perk in like PvE. So I wouldn't really go for Focus Fury on this weapon. After that, we're going to have Swashbuckler. And Swashbuckler is going to be the MVP of this weapon. Just with one stack of Swashbuckler, you'll be able to drop your TTK from 0.93 to 0 0.60. Yes, it is that big of a drop. Even bigger than Desperado. So if you're looking to get the most out of this weapon with a damage perk, Swashbuckler is going to be it. And the final perk on this slot is going to be Headseeker, which unfortunately is not really going to do much to help us with this uh, pulse rifle since it is an adaptive frame. Headseeker is usually, I know, a go-to, but for the adapters, it's not really like super great. And since we're already talking about Crucible, let's talk about the best Crucible perks that you can go for, and it's definitely going to be Swashbuckler. Just being able to push down your TTK by that much with a single stack of Swashbuckler is huge. And while it does require a kill, I think the payoff is worth it with Swashbuckler on this weapon. It's going to make you two burst people, and they're not going to see it coming. Now for PvE, the two main choices I would say are either one for all, especially repairing it up with stats for all, or jolting feedback. I would especially like jolting feedback in some endgame content, where it starts to feel like the legendary weapons can kind of struggle. I feel like they're uh, being able to use jolt an enemy by shooting them a bunch of times will be really helpful, not only at being able to kill those bigger enemies faster with a legendary weapon, but also anything that might be around it. So because of that, Jolting Feedback is what I really want on this weapon. And it's actually what you've been watching in the background. I've been playing with one of the Jolting Feedback, so if you just randomly see some lightning going around, that's the Jolting Feedback. And like I said, when things start to get tougher, that's really when you're going to see this uh, perk shine. Now don't get me wrong, a one for all is still going to be an amazing perk. That 35% damage buff will definitely also make you kill things faster in harder content, especially since you don't need a kill to activate it. Now when it comes to God Rose for PvE, I'm going to be looking for Stats Throw with Jolting Feedback or One Throw. Those are going to be the ones that I'm looking for. And for the Crucible, I'm going to be looking for Keep Away plus Swashbuckler, Lone Wolf Swashbuckler, or Closing Time plus High Impact Reserves, because that roll really intrigues me and I just can't wait to see it. But those are the roles that I'm going to be looking for and the ones that I recommend that you guys go for. If you guys have any other suggestions or maybe something that I didn't take into account, if you want to suggest your own god in the comments below, make sure you leave it down there and tell me just what's your thought process behind the god rope. But with that, that's going to be the end of today's video. I appreciate everyone stopping by. Hopefully you guys have been enjoying this first day of the new season. And I'm going to get back to testing some more weapons and also running some more onslaughts. So... Thank you for stopping by, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.